The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 15th, the Magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, send that one off early. And inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we actually got a sea of green. I'll ball those slightly. It's basically flat in the Dow, flat in the S&P. The Nasdaq's up four. That's flat. Russell's up 15. Semi's up 20. Tranny's up 14. Gold is up uh, 70 cents. Silver's up 14 pennies. Slice we crude up a buck 35. Natural gas is up 10 cents. The U.S. dollar, well, it's not up. It's down 15 pennies. Trading out at 102.35. Lead the charge. Dollar-wise, the upside, we got Sarepta Therapeutics up 32 bucks, 26%. Monday.com, 17 bucks, 13 percent. Alex Monday, Neo Games up 14 bucks. That's a 112 percent move. Heiko Corp, 14, 9 percent. Lamb Research, 12, 2 percent there. Shockwave Medicals off 16 bucks. That's about a 6 percent move to the downside, followed by Tractor Supply off 8. Palo Alto down 7, Intuit down 7. United Health Group down 6. That's about 1 and a quarter percent to the downside. So we got some shakers and we've got some movers. But let's just go take a look at exactly what the markets have done, what signals they were providing to you and I. This morning, this is really an update for subscribers out there. So subscribers knew that the 60-minute time frame charts were the likely time frame that were controlling the market. And that's really what part of what I do each day as I go through. I start my day off in the 5 a.m.-ish uh, range. I go through all kinds of uh, charts out there, provide a lot of that detail to subscribers. But it helps me to understand what's going on inside the market. We take a look at what's going on overseas in Asia and Europe and so forth. And then I, as when I get to the U.S. aspect, I, I look for some kind of synergy. Well, the synergy came from the 60-minute time frame charts. That's why it was pretty easy to identify that it was the 60-minute charts that really should be our focus for the day. Those were the current flows of the ocean, so to speak. Well, we all had TD nine count tops out here and each of those formed uh you got about five o'clock this morning let me make sure it was five here i don't know if it was five but close to five o'clock it was uh six o'clock uh, for the NQ. Now, what we knew at that stage this morning, we saw price backing up. We knew we had TD9 counts. We also knew we had the oscillator and change line that was being tested. That was about the 9 o'clock time frame. So we knew that. But it was if price gets below that level, it should make a run for its breakout area. And that's sponsored to us by that TD9 count. If it's a pattern you don't know, you should learn it. Just to subscribe to Mastering Probability. There's some workshops up there that will teach you that pattern. So it sets up that breakout level inside the ES Mini 4128. It's possible that the move lower for the day is over. We'll take a look at that too. In the case of the NQ, 13,367.50 was its target. Now, price did get below those areas, but we use the body of the candle as truly the essence of price. The wicks on those candles 
or upper or lower shadows, whatever you want to refer to them as. They're nothing more than the screaming memes. They're the, the they're, they're what took place during a 30 minute session, but it's the open and the close, the body of that candle that really is the essence of price that really is important for us. We can see in the case of the ES and the NQ, both those things have held. Now, what they're dealing with is a resistance here. The NQ first up, and that's that red oscillator and change line. It does need a close above red oscillator and change line. Otherwise, resistance will have had, and we'll take a look at that 13, 357, 50 area again. Now, if price gets above that, we can see at 13, 412, at 13, 426, and at 13, 447 are additional battles for the NQ on a move higher. In the case of the ES Mini, it has to still deal with that red oscillator and change line. Currently at about the 41, let's call it 41, 42 on a further move higher. And then above that, and if this is just a counter trend move on the 60 minute time frame, where price would find resistance would be between 41, 47 and 41, 50 out there. Now, the real number to be paying attention to today, or at least I believe that it is, is the uh, 17, 59, 80 level. What's 17, 59, 80? Excellent question. 1759.80 is the high of the TD9 count pattern on the Russell 2000. That is being attacked as we speak. We have another 19 minutes, just short of 19 minutes, 18 minutes right now. If in 18 minutes we see the Russell 2000 close above 1759.80, that pattern will have failed. The weak indice will be the leader out there. And actually, bull markets kind of run pretty good when you've got the Russell and the NQ that are leading the charge. Now, look, this is just a 60-minute time frame exercise here. It's not the full day. But really, with regard to the rest of the day, if we get that close above 1759.80, we should not be surprised to see that the signal coming from the weak link out here is saying, well, today's not going to be too bad. Now, why would we have a, two, a, a rally today? Why, why would we have a rally today in the equity markets? Why should we have a rally today? Let's get rid of these 60-minute time frame charts. Let's go over and take a look at, did I put that up there? I don't know if I did. Let's see here. We should take a look at our, our knee-jerk chart. This is the daily time frame now for the daily equity future contract. Those green lines out there, green or red, are the oscillator and change lines. Remember, in the opening, I mentioned that the ES Mini's real resistance level is that green oscillator and change line. You can now see it in the works there, right? Everybody would have thought that on this big rally day here on May the 5th, that was a nice wide-ranging bar that the markets were ready to add higher. Uh, but Stevie and subscribers knew that, well, hold your horses here. Because all price is done has got up to that resistance line. It's the reason I developed it. It is not a moving average. You can move in moving averages, but it won't replicate the oscillator unchanged line out there. So 4154 is a real key level for the daily time frame for the ES Mini out here. You can see the ES Mini had two days, two consecutive pullbacks uh, uh, days out there. They typically last two to four days. Then we see a move higher out here. Uh, we are above that green, uh, oscillator and change on the daily time frame for the Russell. So that's looking pretty good out here. Shoot the NQ strong leg bull. Yeah, it's got that bearish engulfing candle. It does confirm a road momentum indicator top. But as long as price remains above that green oscillator and change line, its momentum is still strong out there, not waning. And the Russell tooth or the Dow equity future contract, that had five consecutive days of the downside. So it's due. It's due for a rally, and that rally should be at least a two-day rally. So that's what I see when we take a look at the daily equity future contracts. Their knee-jerk reaction moves, the 60-minute time frame chart for those equity future contracts, and that means pay attention to that Russell 2000 because you get a close above that in another 16 minutes, that being 1857, something or other out there. You probably wrote that number down on your pad of paper. That likely tells us that equity markets will continue to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at NSC for Roger, as well as uh, Plains All American PAA. Of course, folks, I'd love to hear from you as well. 877 927 6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Before we move on to individual positions and so forth, out of let's take a look at the market breadth uh, that's going on as well. So here's the uh, NASDAQ 100. You're looking in the upper right-hand side. Uh, when you see these uh, speed dials in the uh, green zone, green or blue zone, they'll have a positive percentage number. That tells you that it's a bullish cross or what that means, folks. As an example, on a 60-minute time frame right now, there's 48 instruments trading above the top of their daily profile, 26 below. There's 28 with inside the uh, profile. I'm not as concerned about the ones inside as I am. Are we more bullish or bearish out there? Are more instruments trading above resistance or below support? In this case here, for a 60-minute time frame, it is above, res is above resistance where we have uh, things trading. The case of the weekly it's basically a one or two stock difference it's 25 above 26 below so it's really pretty neutral signal so the overall signals for market breadth for the nasdaq 100 is bullish out there um, and the nasdaq obviously can move things higher and having the russell out in front is uh, not uh, is is a is also a bullish thing if we take a look at it shorter term which would be 30 minute time frame let's take a look at the nasdaq we'll come back here to the s p we take a look at the nasdaq you're 56 above and 12 below so the uh, nasdaq should continue to uh, rally out there. Now, let's go take a look at the S&P. This is where we get this choppy market. So this is not a one-way move or anything along those lines. Here, we are bullish on the 30-minute uh, time frame with 228 above, 102 below. But when we get to the other four time frames, so let's go see exactly where we're at at this moment in time. That's at 1119 in the morning. Let's switch this over, make sure that we are on the S&P 500. Here we go. And now what we've got is we are bearish. 60 to 40 daily and weekly timeframes out there. And so you got this consolidation going on inside the market. We've got market breadth that is at odds with each other out here. So expect these choppy conditions to continue unless skies clear. And for skies to clear, we'd have to get back to a uh, to a situation where we were market breadth positive across the board out there. And that is not what we have. Next resistance level, these are the charts here for the NQ or the multi-day timeframes out here. Next stop for the NQ, likely that three 
13,447, or really it's TD9 count top, which is 13,447.50. Get a close above that, the NQ likely has the 13,487 and a, a quarter. So that's what's going on with regard to market breadth as well as uh, under the covers for the NQ out there. Let's go take a look at our first request. This is coming in from Roger inside the Tiger's Den. Roger wants to take a look at NSC out there. So we've got NSC. It's trading at about 214. Let me just make sure of where it's trading at. Just by confirming that on my other set of uh, screens out here. Yeah, 214.09 is the uh, print. And Roger, right now, what it's attempting to do is take out a TD9 count top. In order to do that, it needs to close above the high from April 21st. That high is 215.18. If it closes above that, that topping signal will be negated, and that will suggest to you and I, because price would also be above the top of its daily profile, that its next run or target on a daily time frame is 227.87. Now, it is not that until it closes above the high from April 21st at 215.18. Now, there was 3.5 million shares that traded hands that day so far. In nearly two hours of trading, you're at 336. So it's moving into that swing point with light volume. No indication whether it's going to be able to close above it. But we have another TD9 count pattern that completed on Monday. And price is trading above that high as well as the top of this daily profile. So although it doesn't have the volume from an enthusiasm standpoint, it sure is giving us signals that it is ready to take that level out. That's that high of that candle session on the daily time frame from uh, April the uh, 21st out there. On a weekly basis, you've got a nice TD9 count bottom. Price now above, it closed above last week, that oscillator and change line. Its price target is 218.04. That is the bottom of that weekly profile. So we've got a 218.04. Well, the first target though, is still gonna be that high. That high being 215.18. Then above that, 218.04. Above that, you've got 227.87. Don't get a lot of help or assistance from the monthly time frame chart, so we won't focus any time on that. Now, in the NSC, you are likely to get a fifth consecutive bar to the upside. Now, we have seen six consecutive bar moves out here. The last time we saw that was on March the 31st. And that led to a three-bar move to the downside out here. We had a five-bar move to the upside back on April 17th. That led to a one-day move to the downside out there. So what I'm saying is that uh, this looks like because it's moving that swing point with light volume, it may take a few days to get through there. Maybe it doesn't get through there at all, but it is attempting to do just that out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at NSC on a 30-minute time frame. It doesn't look like the high is ready to stop just yet or the move higher is ready to stop just yet. And the reason that we say that, if we look at that 30-minute time frame chart here, again, this is for NSC, what we see is we are now forming bar number eight. But that still needs to be the high of the pattern out here. So if we're going to get a short-term TD9 count top, last time we got one of those, it looks like it might have been back here at 1,500 hours on May the 5th. We did get a TD9 count top that really didn't take hold on 1530 on May the 9th out there. Oh, we had another one here that did take hold. We had a little bit of a retracement back to support the profile level. So this is suggesting to you, Roger, that there's a half-hour chart, so we're in bar number eight. Now, you still have to exceed the high over the course of uh, by 1230. If that high gets up pierced, that would be 212.42, uh, 214.57. Then you'd likely have a TD9 count top and expect some type of intraday pullback or retracement. But otherwise, NSC looks good. Kind of long in the tooth with regard to consecutive day rallies. It suggests that we should see some type of pullback. But right now, you like how it's uh, trading out there with the lack of, with the exception being the lack of volume. So that's NSC. That was Norfolk Southern Corp out here. Let's go take a look at PAA, see what it's doing. I say PAA, I think I should say MCO after that. I almost typed that in. That's not what it is. This is Plains America, I believe, Plains American Pipeline, which is having one heck of a day today. And Raj, what it's running into is that TD9 count breakdown resistance level, 1329. It's been up as high as, today it's been up as high as 1344. But that's the real level that price needs to take out. Now, it's got nice volume, already 5 million shares today. As it takes on a, a swing point, here's one swing point, April 24th, the volume there, 2 million shares. So it's going to, it has the volume already to take that out. It's taking on another swing point that formed that Rhodes Mint Indicator top. That was March 3rd. 3.5 million shares there. So you're just dealing with the sellers that reside there protecting 43.29. If that level fails, you should see at least a test of the high. I think you should see a test of that high anyways. But what I think 
And what it does are two different things. That high being, again, the uh, level of 1350. If you get a close above that, then there's likely an A to B equals CD to the upside, and it's a pretty good one. However, you're dealing with resistance. The daily roads momentum indicator resistance, the TD9 count breakdown resistance, the weekly TD9 count, and the weekly roads momentum indicator top out here. And on a weekly basis, the volume really metrics that you're looking at, it's moving into a swing that has 19 million. It's way too early to determine, but you're at 5 million already, so it does seem pretty good. So Plains All American Pipeline is doing everything in its power to try to move higher out there. It's just you're dealing with that significant resistance. So if you're in a long position, you like the volume that you have. You just don't like the fact that resistance has not failed. On a 30-minute time frame, if we take a look at PAA out here, we can see that it's got the potential to form a TD9 count top. But in the next um, 40, uh, 30, 35 minutes, price would have to spike above that high being 13.44. So if it doesn't do that, the 30-minute chart is kind of irrelevant to us at the uh, moment. So that's what I see, plain American pipeline that was for roger the tiger said we come back to this break we're going to take a look at paypal p w p y p l that's for seven inside the tiger's den and folks i could use some more requests so steve at tfn.com or inside the tiger's den anything hope you're right back. the gold report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Dow's uh, on the NSC to the downside, up 11 points, so it's flat. s and is flat as well. It's up three points. The NASDAQ up 31. Russell's up 16. We're taking a look at PayPal. PYPL is the uh, stock uh, symbol out here. And PayPal looks just absolutely horrible. So this is for number seven inside the Tiger's Den. What was your request out there? Can I find it? Uh, Roger, Roger, Roger. Uh, seven paypal mr rhodes so paypal's trading below last year's low if you want to find um an ugly uh, stock any stock uh just look and take a look and see how it's com trading compared to last week's uh, last year's low if it's trade below that it, there's a it's a it's a herd animal that's for sure bullish side would be trading above last year's highs out there so in the case of paypal i don't have the yearly chart up on our screen but it is trading below last year's low and that's uh, awfully sick in fact it's getting back towards the ipo type prices out there but if we look at the daily time frame we do not have any kind of a bottom signal whatsoever whatsoever yeah it probably can come up with an a to b equals cd to the downside seven but what you need out here is a bullish reversal candle in fact i would say here's the a to b point here's what we would use here's your a down to b and i'll just simply move that over to where the high next side comes in after that low looks like that would be about right here DZ. So it's it's close to the one to one level out there. And if you did get a bullish reversal candle, uh, you would then generate a buy the D point. But I'd, I'd be careful here with regard to uh, PayPal. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly chart last week negated each of its bottom patterns that are out there. So this just simply says lower price. Yeah, a bullish reversal candle seven would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom there and really need the same thing on the monthly. Now it's too early in the month to know whether it's gonna negate this TD nine count bottom or not. If price did close below, uh, 6851 then the answer to that question would be yes out there. So PayPal just basically looks ugly, fugly, and whatever other term you wanna to give to it, it is trading below last year's low. And I know there's a lot of folks that might say, well, hey, maybe this is a good bottom fishing candidate out here. Um, I think there might be better places to go fishing than inside of a PayPal out there. So I hope that helps you out, Seven. At least I can share with you, there are no bottom patterns. And any bottom patterns that were out there were negated last week. So I hope that that information helps you out. Let's go take a look at Shell, S-H-E-L. This is for Frank inside the Tiger's Den. And we take a look at uh, Shell right now. It's trading at about $60.87. What it's doing right now, Shell, uh, um, um, uh, Frank, is it's dealing with the resistance, that oscillator and change line. So it is consolidating, in essence, with inside its daily profile. You know this is a significant resistance within the range of 61.65 to 61.98, which happens to be its bearish structure daily profile. But there's also resistance at 62.36, the TD9 count breakdown level. So right now, uh, your specific question was, was the low from March, was that a washout? What was your exact language? Your language was... Would you say the high volume March low is a washout bottom? I would say that it's a TD nine count bottom. I don't know whether it's a washout or it's not. I'm really just a pattern recognition trader. And so um, whether, you know, it's got high volume, Tom would say no. He'd say you're going to get down there and test it. We did get price inside there, but it never tested the low of that uh, swing point out there. I don't want to put words in Tom's mouth, but I think that he would say no. But what I can share with you, absolutely, Frank, is it was a TD9. It was a solid TD9 count bottom, and it took price all the way up towards its breakdown area at the 6236 level. So what do we have going on right now? It's just a kind of a, it's a really a sideways consolidation, isn't it? We had that big gap to the upside, or we had a gap to the upside out here. And so price just consolidating with inside that. If we just simply use my rectangular drawing tool out here, not that I'm really that good with drawing. In fact, I basically I'm horrible at drawing. But here, you know, you could almost say that, you know, didn't completely close it. You know, would that be at this stage, this would be the safer consolidation, you know, type pattern. But that's basically what Shell is doing. We take a look at this daily time frame. So keep notice of that on the weekly basis, a trading with inside his profiles as well. And on the monthly basis here, it did look like it really wanted to break out above that 61.17 level. I mean, we did get one weekly or one monthly close above that. That was last month. If we have two consecutive closing, Frank. Two consecutive closings above 61.17, then the monthly chart would be suggesting that this wants to move higher. So, is it a washout bottom? No idea. Was it a solid TD9 count bottom? Absolutely, positively, it was. And now we just have a consolidation that is going on out here. So, I do hope that that helps you out. We've got time. I don't have any other requests. Uh, so, let's uh, just see, see what kind of seasonal pattern Shell has. Let's assume 
let it we can access the data here. So let's find out. And while that's happening, I'm gonna take a swig of Delray's finest, which is really a, not, not an accurate statement. Um, here we take a look at the shell. This typically runs higher from that March time frame. So you're asking, hey, was that a uh, you know was that a significant bottom? We think that it was certainly a, a, a bottom. Uh, we got the pattern uh, for that, and then price runs higher. Now it typically runs higher into about the June time frame. Then it takes a uh, it takes a summertime break. This is not well. This is over. Let me let me make sure I have the correct number of years. That was 25 years. Yeah. How about 38 years? Let's put all the data up there, Stevie. Not much, not much difference out here. Again, a high typically in the June time frame, and it takes a, a vacation break. It takes a nice long vacation that typically lasts through the September to October time frames out there. So, Frank, I hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol S H E L. That was Shell. And uh, let me just check the email, see if there's any other requests out here. I don't see any requests inside the Tiger's Den, but let's see if we get lucky. Yeah, we do. We've got. Uh, Thank you, Nicholas, and thank you, Greg. Nick writes, he wants to take it Qualcomm, Q-C-O-M. So we're going to just type that uh, symbol in here. And his question is, would you just simply go over it? So we absolutely will. Q-C-O-M, trading out inside of, um, well, it could. It, so you've got a TD9 count bottom that could form today. It will form today. It should form today. It will form today if it closes below. 105.77, we're 104.72. So the first thing there, Nicholas, for you to know is on a daily time frame, you're likely going to get a TD9 count bottom. Now, you also could get a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom because right now you've got a bull sash candle. So if we do get that bullish reversal candle, you'll have two. Does it make it a stronger bottom? No, it just makes it a pattern that's got two bottoms out there. And that would then suggest, like if you're an options trader and you found the right option and it was worthwhile, this would you would expect that this to get up to 106.61. Does it get above that? That, that I don't know. But does it make that other $2 move? Very likely, yes. I've tested it. You get 90% probability, at least 90% probability of that unfolding. If price gets above that, then the next target becomes that gap that it's in or that 116 area, either 116 or 116.80. But um, uh, Nicholas, uh, that, that's what you have on the daily time frame. On the weekly, you know, we don't have, we still have a. We don't. We don't have anything on the weekly. We've got price trading below profile, price trading below its red oscillator and change line, price trading into a swing point that had 63 million shares. Last week, you moved into it with 40 million shares. So at least you're moving down lower with lighter volume. You have a TD9 count uh, bottom pattern on the monthly. That's being tested as we speak. So I say go with the daily, Nicholas. Go with the daily. Now, here's, 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 the, here's the concern. And the concern is, and Qualcomm's got a nice, you know, set of daily bottom signals out there. There's even an A to B equals CD. Does it really have three? Let's just check this out here. We're going to break. Let's just draw on the A to B line. What I was going to say, the issue is, has the market topped? Has the market topped? That's really the question that really we're trying to decipher here, Nicholas. And if the market's topped, do you want to take a long position in Qualcomm? Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we still have uh, markets that are uh, a bit higher out here. The only uh, one that's struggling is the Dow. It's off 31 points. s and really flat. NASDAQ, 28 points upside. The uh, Russell's up 15. We're taking I just finished up the charts here for uh, Qualcomm. E you know, what I suggested, as I said, uh, so, Nicholas, you definitely have bottom signals here today as we speak. And uh, the question becomes, you know, if we are in a market that is going to move lower, will the semis, will Qualcomm, will it move uh, to the upside out there? And I don't know the answer to that. I just simply want to put that out there. And the reason I put that out there, we kind of briefly touched on it on uh, Friday with um, with uh, John uh, Z Insider Tigers and who called. We were taking a look at the uh, NASDAQ uh, charts out there. But what we also noticed was we, on a weekly basis, that uh, we've got TD9 count inside both the NASDAQ 100 and the NQ. Those are the weekly charts on the very right-hand panel that you're looking at. Now, what we know about that pattern, and, and, and you can take a look at the NQ, ran right in that resistance at where it should have, 13.453, the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Now, we know that on the TD9 count pattern, that the high can form in the bar following bar number nine. So that says either the end of this week on Friday, or it could happen intra week, of course, or on the daily time frame as well. Well, there's no TD9 count out there; it's just the road's meant to indicator signal. So we've got so we've got a top on the daily, but price is what's been stubborn though, right? Price is it's still neutral at at worst case the signal is neutral because in the NQ price is above the top of its resistance, uh, both its uh, a profile as well as that uh, oscillator and change line out there. Um, so we take a look at the NDX 100, same real setup. It still also closed above its oscillator and change line. But so this is the this is the reason to pause. We don't have this setup in all the other industries, but the NASDAQ can't both lead things higher and lower. Now, that's a cool thing about the patterns that are present. Why? Because uh, if these highs get taken out, and that we wouldn't know about that until not next week, but the week following inside the uh, NQ out there, you know, that will help to set the stage as to how to interpret what the shareholders, what buyers and sellers are communicating to us. But right now, they just suggest a bit of a pause out there. So I just wanted to make sure that I shared that with you, Nicholas, as well. So thanks so much for writing in. Have a, a magical, marvelous Monday. Tarpon 2 inside our Tiger's Den would like to take a look at Bud. This Bud's for you. Bud is trading right now at about 61.06. I could have a little bit of a delay there. Uh, let me just make sure. 
B-U-D. And uh, so you've got, what do we have? Price is trading below its TD knockout breakout level. Yeah, it's trading at 61 bucks even Steven right now. So that's not a real good thing out here. Where's price headed to? It did last week at least hold the top of its weekly profile. And Tarpon, that was at uh, 6104. The close was at, uh, oh, 6097. It actually failed just below it. Okay. So we know we got a close below profile on a weekly basis. We don't have any kind of a bottom signal on the daily time frame. Monthly is above profile. It looks to me like what Price here wants to do, Tarpon, is target 5966 to 5977. If Price moves below that, then the next battle would be at 5587, 5892, and 5826. Those would be the three numbers to look at. So the daily, from a volume standpoint, you're at only about 500,000 shares today. On Friday, as an example, this did 1.7 million. So that's a pretty decent volume, similar type volume to uh, Friday. Um, what else is Bud doing out here? Bud, you've got six, this could be seven consecutive days to the downside for uh, Bud out here. So that says you're, you know, due for at least some kind of little bit of a relief, but I don't see that relief. If I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart, well, let's take a quick peek together. Let's open this up. I hear the bell. And uh, so we've got a, a road momentum indicator bottom, but it just has been trading sideways, has not been able to do. So I'm going to summarize, bud, like this. I don't see any kind of a bottom. I assume that's why you would be looking at this instrument out there. So I would say just continue to be patient. Let's go to John in Philly. Hey, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? How was your weekend? Steve, uh, I'm doing very well. Weekend was good. Hope yours was the same. And Steve, um, you just mentioned on your call uh, you were speaking about Qualcomm, a semiconductor company. Yeah. And the uh, the large NASDAQ 100 names. I wanted to uh, supplement that discussion by asking you about Micron, ticker symbol MU. Yes. Uh, I... Uh, I had been prepared a week or two ago to buy it if it broke out over a nest of highs forming at the 65 area. I, um, uh, I jumped the gun on that last week on Wednesday and bought it down very close to 60, anticipating that it would break over 65 before it headed much lower. Uh, so that's my current position uh, of course, it hasn't proved anything yet, but I ask if you can look at the daily, weekly, and monthly for me and tell me what your work shows, please. So you've got nice volume today. That's the first thing that I'll start with. This is uh, 9.3 9 million shares as we speak. It's moving in, as John has pointed out, to kind of a cluster of swing points. 6512, John, is the number that I would use. 6512 is the weekly TD9 count breakdown level. Granted, price hasn't gotten up to the, that area on these last several attempts out here, but that's the number that I would look at. So on a daily time frame, there's a swing point from April 28th. That volume on that day was 18 million. Again, we're already at nine, so it's got the volume as it pushes up into that. Another swing point at 16 million. We're already at nine, so that's a positive. And then the last swing that I'm looking at is the one from uh, March 29th. Now, that has 51 million shares. So that one, we're pushing up into that with some light volume. That high out there is the uh, six, oops, that high is 64.42. So I still go with 65.12 is the real number that if you closed above it on a weekly basis, that would suggest that we've got a change in trend and we've got a further move higher. Now, that further move higher, the next price target or the next battle, John, would be a 69.77. That's the top of its monthly profile. Um, other than that, I don't see it slowing down right now on a 30-minute time frame. If we pull the 30-minute charts out here, we can see that uh, this is um, there's no topping signal. It's above resistance levels. So theoretically, Micron should continue to move higher, move higher to where? Well, up towards the uh, swing point on a 30-minute basis, that gets us up in that 64-ish area. That ranges from 63.95 with the low to 64.44. So it appears that that is where price is targeted. John, is there any anything else that I can provide you or any questions about these charts or anything that I've shared so far? You know, I, uh, I'm watching uh, along with your presentation. I uh, take a look at that monthly chart. Yeah. How interesting uh, the past four or five months, the rally has gone right up to and stalled 
I know. At your oscillator on change line. I know. I know. I know. It's a. It's tell, a me, that- tell me this. It, tell me this. In your experience with this type of pattern, if if uh, without guessing ahead of time, but if in fact we uh, rally above this sixty-five area and close above it for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks. Does uh, does that suggest on the monthly chart that the 65 that I'd just observe as a roof becomes a floor? Yes. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it does. That's- yeah, but you still got that battle at 6977. Um, you know, but but I, I would say that uh, closing above that 6512 level is uh, would be a would be a real big positive bullish signal. Thanks so much, Steve. You bet. That was John in Philly. When we get back from this break to finish out the show, we're going to take a look at SBSW for Doji as well as Platinum. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, up, folks. Let's, uh, we've got a couple of requests out here. Let's see what we can get to. The first one is SBSW. That is uh, Sybane Stillwater out here. What we don't see is any kind of a bottom uh, pattern. Uh, so it looks to me like what this is going to go do is target its monthly TD9 count breakout level at 739. I'm not saying it stops there. I'm saying that's where it looks like its next target is. I don't have any kind of a bottom signal out here. And uh, last uh, week was a uh, just a horrible candle session wiped out just a, a ton so not much there to uh, look at that at least as i see it at the uh, moment next request was to take a look at uh, platinum so let's move over to the platinum charts here 
give me a moment. We'll pull those up. And we take a look at Platinum. You've got the monthly on the left. You're trading above profile resistance. That's bullish. Weekly, you are uh, trading above a new profile. A new profile this week. Are you? Well, hold on a minute here. Where is the top? Is that 1054? Uh, 1054 even. And uh, we're at 1074. So that's a positive. So that suggests it wants to move higher. The daily time frame isn't so sure. You've got a TD9 count top that is held, price is below profile. So in order to really get that message that price really does want to move higher, go retest those highs out there, you've got to get back above 1098.70. And 1098.70 is where a counter trend rally would end inside of uh, Platinum. So that's what I see there, Doji. I hope that that helps you out. Greg wanted to take a look at BEAM. B-E-A-M is the uh, ticker symbol. So let's see if we can pull that chart up. And there we go for BEAM. Now, this is having one heck of a nice day out here. And and uh, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern, no bearish reversal candle. If you did get a bearish reversal candle, you would have a sell the D point pattern. We are trading above the top of its weekly profile. It's like breaking out above that. So it says longer term 4838 is where it wants to go set its sights. It's got a Rose Mentum indicator bottom. On the uh, monthly chart, your next level of resistance is at the top of its profile. And that's at 4039. Let me just make sure that that's it. Yeah, 4039 is your number. So that is likely where price heads to. If we take a look at that WFC, this is for Mimi. This will let us get to all of them. She's looking for an entry point into Wells Fargo. WFC, again, is the ticker symbol. Let's see if we get those charts up on our screen. Yeah, we might not pull that off here, Mimi. I'm trying. I'm trying. Wells Fargo. Well, the entry point was at 3706. Uh, maybe we'll get to this tomorrow. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magical Monday, folks.